Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to scale your SMMA in 2020, and I'm going to show you how to get to seven figures. So this is based on my own experience running a seven figure agency and scaling it to seven figures within two and a half years of starting it. So I'm going to go over four crucial pieces that are essential to be able to scale your agency to 100K a month and beyond. So the first piece I want to talk about is the right niche. This is something a lot of agency owners get wrong. They either choose niches that are very competitive where everybody else is selling the same thing and they're just a commodity or they choose niches that are not lucrative. So the ideal niche, in my opinion, it's an intersection between being really lucrative, right? So let's say if you're doing um, something for e-commerce stores and you're scaling ads for e-commerce stores, then that's lucrative because you can scale these ad accounts to 100K, 200K a month and be able to get retainers that are like 15, 20K a month. Now, on the other hand, you also want something that's not really competitive. So if you're doing Facebook ads for e-commerce, that's extremely competitive and you're just going to struggle to get clients. While for our agency, we do a lot of YouTube ads for e-commerce and info products. So it's not as competitive and we are able to close clients at a higher rate. So the first thing is a good niche because that allows your agency to grow a lot faster. And I've seen in my friend group, a lot of people who started agencies in a different niche that's more competitive and less lucrative, they're kind of struggling to kind of get the same rate of growth that our agency has had, where our agency has seen extremely explosive growth due to our niche. All right, so let's get into part two, and that's having business partners or a business partner. So this is something that isn't really talked about, but what I've seen is that the, all of the really successful agency owners I know have a business partner or partners. In our case, in Lynx Digital, I have two business partners, Neil and Alex, and they're extremely instrumental in ensuring that the business runs smoothly. Now, there are people who are successful solo, but more often than not, I see getting a business partner, it usually acts as an exponential growth factor, right? So it will basically, you know, increase your growth rate by 4x or 5x, and you actually get a much bigger pie. And so a lot of people, they're afraid of dividing up the pie, but then if you have a way bigger pie, honestly, you get a lot more. The reason I think a business partner is so important in many cases is because we as human beings often have strengths and weaknesses. Now, there are some of us who are really strong in a lot of things and we're very well-rounded, but what I've noticed with entrepreneurs especially is that they can be different types of entrepreneurs. So there's people like me who are really good at, you know, creative, visionary stuff and kind of coming up with ideas, but I suck at implementation. I suck at operations and systems, right? Like I can come up with this awesome idea, get the ball rolling, get it started, but then I need somebody to come in who can organize it and systemize it. And that's why, you know, me having my business partners, they're strong in some of the things I'm weak at. The other part of having business partners is they call you out on your BS. So for example, um, this is a funny story, but there's a guy in our group, uh, one of my friends, and he's an awesome guy, but sometimes he makes decisions about his business that don't really make sense. From a strategic perspective, they do not make much sense at all. And I think the reason that happens is because he's a certain personality type and it makes a lot of sense to him, but he doesn't have a business partner to call him out and really test those ideas. And you know, we as friends often try to do that, but having a business partner tell you that is different than a friend tell you that. So in my case with Lynx Digital, there are a lot of times where I wanna do something and my business partners push back really hard and I have to either fight for it and basically be like, explain why I want it in a very sharp manner where they're like, okay, this makes sense. Or I have to back down and be like, okay, you guys are right. There are some major flaws in my plan and I need to fix this. Having a business partner helps you reduce bias in your thinking. Um, so it helps you make sharper, better decision. And also the other part of it is the emotional weight of entrepreneurship. If you're doing this alone, it's tough, right? Because especially the first two years of starting a, you know, agency, it's kind of brutal, especially, you know, when let's say you're a little smaller and one or two uh, clients leaving you can really hurt you or kill you, you really want to have somebody that you can share the weight with. So you don't need a business partner on day one. I got mine, you know, like my first one was when I started my agency and the second business partner, he came on when we hired him when we were a little bigger. But 
you do want to keep that in mind that this doesn't have to be a solo thing and at a certain point you may be able to find a great business partner who can actually help you and you know you don't have to be 50 50 partners it could be somebody who has some sort of equity in it so they have some level of ownership but you do want to have people who can kind of be play that role of being the devil's advocate and fight back against your biases and yeah ultimately it's entrepreneurship is hard and having somebody to you know that is in the same position as you and they're also kind of in the same boat as you and you guys are the owners that really helps a lot honestly being able to have that is one of the reasons why i've been able to scale my agency okay so on another note just like I mentioned, business partners are important. What's also really important is having friends or colleagues or people that you know that you're close to that are doing the same thing. So what I've noticed is in our group, uh, there are a lot of agency owners. So my, my, for example, my best friend Ryan, he runs an email marketing agency that's extremely successful. And you know, we've been living and traveling together for the last three years. And because of that, we've been able to help each other out and our agencies are not competing, but we're able to kind of provide help to each other. And then we've got a guy uh, named Lewis who runs like a PPC agency in our friend group. We've got a guy named Sam who runs a PPC agency as well. We've got other agency owners. So because everybody's doing these different agencies and we're all in that same close tight knit friend group, we're all able to help each other out and help each other discover ways to grow. So that's also important. You wanna surround yourself with peers that are on the same path as you, even if they're not in the same business as you. Now, if you don't have people like that, one thing I recommend is joining masterminds or high-level groups. Uh, for us, we've joined a bunch of masterminds, which has helped us get clients um, and also make a lot of friends and meet a lot of people who've been able to help us and provide really great advice. So yeah, it's really important to just meet people who are doing the same thing as you, but also people who are doing things that are a bit different because then you can hear a different perspective and both of those perspectives can help a lot. So moving on to the next part. I want to talk about two funnels or acquisition systems you need in your agency if you want to scale to seven figures. The first acquisition funnel is the lead generation funnel to get clients. You want to make sure you have systems for getting clients that aren't just you know dependent on you or referrals. You want to make sure you have multiple systems. So for example, my friend, he has uh, cold email, LinkedIn, Upwork. Uh, for us, we have content marketing, we have Upwork, we have uh, referrals, we have um, you know, our Facebook group and direct outreach. And now we're also implementing cold email. So we have these different acquisition strategies that we use, and I'm trying to actually systemize and create more acquisition strategies so we're not dependent on one acquisition strategy. And because for an agency, clients are the lifeblood of your business. So you need to be able to get clients on tap, clients on demand, right? So whenever you need clients, you should be able to get them fairly easily. And that's how you can charge higher rates and really grow your agency, especially if you have a wait list, especially if you have too many people who want to work with you, because then you can just be like, hey guys, uh, yeah, you can work with us, but we're gonna start in two weeks. So you have to pay a deposit to get started. And that's something that's worked great for us. So that's really important is you gotta have these lead generation systems you can turn on and off to be able to get you more clients when you need. Now there's another second funnel that's like really, really important. And that's actually your hiring funnel. And this comes into play once you're at the 20K a month plus mark, but you really need to have a great system for hiring people and a really great philosophy for that. So for us, we basically have a SOP where it's like, okay, if you're hiring media buyers, we put them through a three-step process, interview them, uh, you know, make them do a technical assessment make them do uh, a trial and so we're basically filtering people and we also know that okay if you want to hire people these are the avenues we want to take these are the places we want to check out and you basically get better at it and at this point we even have an HR person who uh, well part of their role is HR they also help in operations but uh, basically they help with just hiring interviews and doing the first and second stage of interviews. So you wanna build out a hiring funnel where you're like, okay, this is what our hiring system looks like. This is where we go to hire people. This is our standard operating procedure for whenever we want a new job. Uh, this is where we post a job. This is how we conduct the interviews. You also need an organization system. So for us, we use Workable. And then you also need standard tasks for different positions, right? So for example, if you're hiring a VA, we have a certain task that we make them do before we hire them just to ensure that they're a good fit for the role. So it's really important to have the client acquisition funnel and the hiring funnel, both are key to getting the 100K a month or the seven figure park. All right, so let's talk about the last part. And the last part of this is actually systems. So systems are so essential for your business. You want to have really great systems to make sure that work gets done, that the work is quality and so on. So for example, at Lynx Digital, we have automated systems where our account managers have to fill out a certain form at the end of the each week 
that details the communication they had with the client. So that way we can have a history of every account where we can go back and be like, oh yeah, this is what happened in this account, this is what the communication was. These are all the calls that were uploaded by our account manager. So we're able to troubleshoot issues better and it forces the account managers to always be on top of their game and make sure they're getting that done. So basically systems are uh, processes or methods of doing things that are kind of uh, written down and that people have to follow. And yeah, I'm honestly not that great at systems. Um, I built some systems in our company. For example, I built our original onboarding form, which we still use, you know, we've modified it, but we kind of still use it. But what I found is that my business partner and then people we hire are really good at building systems. So nowadays I don't really build them, but they build them. And what I do is I, I focus more on very high level uh, strategy, uh, starting new projects as well as content so I can you know get this valuable content and information out to you so it's really important when you're starting out in the 10 to 20k a month mark where the owner the founder is probably going to build a lot of systems maybe even to 50k a month um, and if you're really strong at systems if you're a person who's very organized then you, honestly you should build systems the whole way through uh, but for some types of founders like me Honestly, it doesn't make sense to do that beyond a certain point because there are other people I can hire and delegate to who can build better systems while I can focus on my strong points, which is strategy and vision. So to recap, those are the four elements. You know, as I mentioned, you gotta have the right niche, find a business partner, have your client acquisition and your hiring funnels built out, and you also want to make sure that you have great systems in the agency to make sure work gets done and the work is quality. So the systems act as a check. If you like this video, hit the like or subscribe button, um, smash that button so I can keep making these videos. And if you want to learn more about scaling an agency, I'm going to link to another video about how to scale from six figures to seven figures. Thanks for watching this video.